So we're going to record quickly do our part two of this. So you guys just get a, a refresh. We're going to set this in here. We're going to scan. Press the button. Why is it not liking me right now? I might need to recalibrate it. I might actually need to be on that software. I'm going to recalibrate it just to make sure because we took a minute here. So it's on the tray. It's looking at the little white dot. It's thinking about itself. It's thinking really hard about itself. All right, now we're good to go. My little light is all lit up here, so we're live. So I'm going to set it back in the tray, make sure it's in there properly. Ding. Across. Go down. So you can do this pretty quickly once you kind of get used to it. Okay, and you'll notice the back of the little uh, spectrophotometer flashes green at you when you've done it correctly. It flashes red when you've done it incorrectly. So even if you don't have the little sound for the computer on, you can get a visual. Plus, you know, it makes you kind of feel nice. I win. Now, the reason I asked you guys to write all the paper information on the bottom of your pieces of paper for your target is because then that information is basically going to get turned into your profile name that we just went over. OK, so that is finished. So I'm now going to hit the next arrow. Now, at this part, it should actually do a couple different things. It's going to show me the color spectrum, which is kind of this fun, pretty chart here. And it's also going to show me a couple different options for what the ambient lighting setting is. Now, this is kind of new to the, this particular software. Go ahead, Maddie, what's your question? Uh, I was just curious, like, um, where it has the target on the screen, You should have already calibrated before you do the target, OK? It shows you that as one of the screens, and you hit calibrate, and you recalibrate. I recalibrated only because we took some time off between doing the two, OK? So if you notice here, it says ambient light. Now, you can create your profile specifically to be shown under a specific lighting source. So for instance, imagine you're a fine art photographer, and you want to have your prints shown in a gallery. Galleries typically have tungsten lighting, so you can create a profile to be seen under tungsten lighting. It's going to compensate for the fact the lighting's tungsten. Um, standard illumination could be something like fluorescence, or you can actually measure the um, lighting situation. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to calibrate my uh, spectrophotometer here. We're going to try to measure the ambient light in this room. Why? Because we see all of our prints in this room. So we're going to take that, wait for it to calibrate. I'm then going to pick this up, take this piece off. You guys don't really have to worry about this. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yes, when the lighting changes in here, it'll affect how your image looks. Okay, how you view your image is always going to change the colors. All right, if you view under tungsten, it's going to look one way. If you view under fluorescent, it's going to look another way. If you view under daylight, it's going to look a third way. So this is something to keep in mind, like viewing situations are really important as well. And I know specific printers who will not guarantee color accuracy unless if they put a little sticker, there's a special kind of sticker you can buy, unless that sticker looks a certain way, they will not guarantee color accuracy because you're not viewing it in the right situation. Um, so that is very important. And that's one of the challenges of this room is that the lighting is always changing. Um, so keep that in mind, all right? So if you guys make a print and you look at it at home on your wall, it could look really yellow under your tungsten lighting, and then you bring it in here under these terrible fluorescent lights, it's going to look bluish, all right? So we did a quick measurement. This is the lighting in here. You'll notice the green and the red are very high because of the, the fluorescence. And we can keep this measurement. We can save or cancel. I'm going to hit keep measurement. And now it is going to create my profile with this ambient light measurement part of it. You guys don't have to do that part if you don't want to, 
Okay, it's up to you if you want to do the ambient light measurement or not. Oh, go ahead. You, it's, it was right here. There was a little question um, that basically said, leave it as standard, set it as tungsten, or do a measurement. So how did the spectrophotometer go? I basically just took and held up the spectrophotometer like this, oh. upside down. And it showed a little picture um, to what you're supposed to do with it. I held it upside down and took a measurement. Oh. OK. Go ahead. You can. You can add that um, probably after the ink resolution. I would put it in there somewhere um, if you want to add the lighting situation. Um, and I've seen profiles where that, that has been the case. They'll put like 65 for, you know, just past daylight or whatever. So if you want to do that, you can. Um, and it might not be a bad idea. I would add it if you did do a specific measurement or if you set it as like tungsten or something like that. But I'm not too worried about you guys doing that because that's where the software allows you to get really specific. So I got my measurement. I'm going to hit the next arrow. Now, this is where I name the profile, all right, right in here. I'm going to type in, because color chart 800 patches is not really helpful for me. I'm going to type in all of the information that I told you guys to write on the bottom of all your sheets of target paper. So in this case, I'm going to call this... That was like the slowest drop ever. I'm going to call it Strath, TH, because I get that short enough. Strathmore is a pretty long name. If you look at the Hennemuller papers, they usually just go with H-A-H-N. It's understood. Because um, you only get so many, you only get so many characters. Glossy, 170, underscore, 48 PK, underscore, 14, and I could probably put um, FL for fluorescent, because that's the lighting situation here. You could put T for tungsten, D for daylight. If you want to add that in, that would probably be the place to do it. And then underscore um, the date, 215. Um, and let me see how many more characters I have. I actually have a lot. Wow. I'm surprised it's not yelling at me. Um, so there's basically a, a good example of what your profile name is going to look like. All right, you guys should be able to look at that and understand Strathmore paper, glossy, 70, you know, go on and from there. The FL may be the only thing that confuses you as you guys go, what does that mean? Because um, that's new, okay? We haven't done that before. I'm going to save this on the user level, and I should be able to choose where I want to save it. Why is it not giving me that option? Pinwheel of Doom. I'm going to save it just to the desktop for now. All right, I'm going to hit choose. And it should just choose to go to the desktop. Now I'm going to hit create and save profile. And it's thinking about itself, OK? In the old software, it used to show a croissant in a newspaper, which meant this is going to take a minute. Go get a, a snack. Uh, yeah, it would show a croissant, coffee, and a newspaper. Um, computer processing speeds have come a long way. Um, we're asking the computer to do kind of some, some pretty big math right now. So it may take a minute. And it's kind of long enough to be annoying, but not long enough where you can actually like go doing something productive. You can't go to the bathroom or really get a snack. We just have to wait. So it's at 62%. We're waiting. Any questions so far while we're waiting? I'm going to show you what to do with this in a minute as far as saving it yourself and as well also where to put it on the computer so that it is um, accessible through Photoshop. But you want to make sure, the reason I have you guys save it to the desktop is you can then just basically, I'm out of USB plugs, but you can then basically drag and drop it on your external hard drive, your uh, jump drive, whatever, ha what, what have you, okay? You do want to make sure you're saving it externally somewhere. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. That is the project. I know. It's going to be a blast. There should be party hats and noisemakers included. All right. Come on. 96%. You guys laugh, though. This is a skill that I actually did when I was working in New York. This was a big part of my job. So knowing how to do this, or at least having a rudimentary understanding of it, is helpful. 
This is showing me my color profile in lab color. So you'll notice there's L and then A and B. Lab color is the largest of all color spaces. It is what everything goes through for conversions. Um, so we create it and save the profile, and there it is. If we take a look, it should be right there on the desktop. Now, if we do a little bit of info, command I on this guy, you will notice it's that's actually pretty good size. They're usually not quite that big because um, this has got a good bit of information in it. And if you double click on it, it should open up the color sync utility and it's going to show us a little bit more information. Now, all of this stuff, I'm not too worried about you guys knowing about all of this, but we're just looking at this is all of the information that the computer then uses to interpret this profile. All right. Um, and, and just, you know, it's good to just know that it's there. I'm not, worried, like I said, worried about you guys knowing this. But if you double-click on it, don't freak out if that comes up, all right? Double-clicking on it is not going to put it where it needs to put be put. So it's not like a, a plug-in for Photoshop where you double-click it and it automatically gets put in Photoshop. You have to specifically put it in a correct folder. All right, so in this case, I'm going to minimize this. Here's my profile. This is when I go ahead and I copy it to my external source. So I'm just going to drag it to my folder on my last name starts with a G. Where did it go? Did they delete? Nope, there it is. I was like, did they delete my folder? So I can drag this on here and it's going to save on there. There it is, saved on the student drive. All right, if you guys for some reason don't have a jump drive, you can go ahead and save. I'll make a folder in there, just Gibbons, you can save in there. Where you want to put this, now this is important. This is the pay attention moment. This is the reason you will watch this video, is because you will be like, where do I put that? You are going to want to make sure that you are putting this in a very specific place. All right? You are going to need to put it in They change the structure of how this works. You have to put it under your user level, and that's the hard part sometimes. You're going to want to come to go, and if you hit options, option button, see how library comes in and out? Everybody see that up there? You're going to choose library. Now, you're going to want to make sure once that comes up that you are under student, all right, in the little house. This is, this is where it gets complicated. So, HD, user, student, library. Under library, it is going to go in color sync and then in profiles. I'm going to drag this in here and drop it in there. Place it. It may have automatically saved it in there, all right? Now, when you create the profile, more than likely, I'm willing to bet, it saved it in there as well. But because of the deep freeze, when I come back, that profile will be gone. So you're going to need to know where to put it to put it back in there, all right? Because you're going to create the profile, and then two days later, you're going to come and print on the pro with want to print with that profile. It's going to be gone. So you're going to have to make sure you put it back in there. So now I have my profile in there. I should be able to come into Photoshop. Now I may have to restart Photoshop, but let me just double check. I should be able to come into Photoshop and do my print, file print, wait for my pinwheel. I feel like the pinwheel should have a song to sing something while it's twirling around, kind of like Katy Perry the other night. It's very beach ball-y. The dancing sharks are the best, right? They're cool. Those were cool, yeah. All right, so here we go. I should be able to now, guys, drop down my printer profile and see this in here somewhere. Scrolling, scrolling, and there it is, okay? So remember how I said they're put in alphabetical order. Yeah, there's a couple different sections because there's a couple different places on the computer where you can actually save the profile. So it's going to be put in alph alphabetical order. I'm going to now pick that profile, and I'm ready to go print just like I had set up with you guys earlier. Oh, oh, um, it is um, the option button. So let me cancel out of this, and I'll show you that again. So to find that, you're going to come to Macintosh. Um, then you're going to go to User, Student. This is where you click that Option button under View, or excuse me, Go. Yeah. And then you're going to click Library. 
it's like a little hidden folder for some reason they don't want you to get in there and then color sync profiles now notice I dragged it off the desktop it is gone okay it's been moved into that folder so make sure you put it in your thumb drive hard drive whatever before you drag it off the desktop this is um this is the hard drive I'm not sure because it's not on your computer so for your computer you can just go basically finder uh, file new fold new fo finder window and that'll give you basically the same thing and you should be able to it's not liking me right now go through there um, or just click view or excuse me click go and hold down that library and it'll bring it up as well for you does that work um, yeah, there's many different ways to get the same place. I usually just like to click the Macintosh a hard drive and it just opens up a new finder window for me. Okay. Hmm? You gotta hold down the option key while, cl while clicking on go in the finder window. See it? Okay, cool. All right.